Hello, hello everybody, this is HipTopMTG here today with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, we are going to be do doing something very fun. We are going to be looking towards the future of Magic and seeing what may come in the next year. So every Friday in December, I am going to be doing a video related to the either this year or next year as a whole. Whether it be predictions or everything we know, or you'll see as you know, the weeks come on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about 2021 and my predictions. So this is going to combine things we already know and things that we maybe don't know and are kind of just me guessing. So this is not going to be my what I think is actually going to happen. It is, but it is very much, I'm being very specific with my details. I'm not saying, I'm not taking safe guesses. I'm not just saying obvious things. I am saying, you know, on this date, they are releasing secret layer something. And I'm going to stick the whole video from the beginning of this intro, like for the end of this intro onward. I'm going to state it like fact, as if I was doing an end of the year recap uh, kind of thing. So we're going to kind of go through and, and pretend like I know everything that's going to happen. And so these are kind of my predictions and maybe these specific details may not be right. Right, but each one is there for a reason. So why don't we jump right into this? And we're gonna start going month by month. So first we have January. So in January, they are going to be releasing secret layer celebrations as a celebration of the new year, and maybe as an inside joke of woo 2020 is over. This is gonna be running for about a week, and it will it will feature um, some really cool cards, and we'll break down each product individually here in a second. We're also going to get Helheim spoilers from January 11th to the 21st. We're going to get Secret Layer Year of the Ox, the follow-up to Secret Layer Year of the Rat. We're going to get the Kaldheim Arena release and the Kaldheim pre-release all in January. Now, the dates, by the way, um, I'm doing things based on when I think they will happen. Of course, I may be off a week and, you know, some of these things may not be happening, but I'm less confident on the dates. Now, a couple things. Kaldheim pre-release has been confirmed for January 29th, so that I put in parentheses confirmed, although the Arena release technically has not. However, they happen generally on the same day. So, let's break these down. First off, Secret Layer Celebration. I think this is coming out January 1st. And I think it is going to feature these four cards as alternate arts that all have fireworks and are big celebration cards. So we have plain white celebration. Obviously, you know, it's a worldwide celebration. I think that makes a lot of sense. Twilight Prophet, people are setting resolutions looking towards the future, and so I think that's pretty cool as well. We have Thousand Year Elixir, uh, just having to do with years and moving on and life and all of that. And then we have Thousand Year Storm, um, again, kind of relating to year, but also Storm, and I don't know, they're all very interesting cards that I think you could do a lot of interesting things with in terms of the art. Uh, and we have seen things in the pack where it's like past, where it's like, oh, dog themed, but there are no dogs. It's all just just cards with dogs on them, so I think depending on how the art was done, it would change this up. Next we have Kaldheim, which I think is gonna, spoilers are gonna happen on the 11th through the 21st, and Kaldheim, the pre-release, is going to happen on the 29th alongside the arena release. Um, Kaldheim spoilers are pretty set in stone, I mean, we may get a couple before the beginning of January just to kind of hype up the set a little bit, but I think the bulk of them are going to be happening those 10 days. Generally, there's about a week in between the end of spoilers and the release on Arena and such. So, yep, I think that is what is going to happen. On, on top of that, we have Secret Layer Year of the Ox, which is a little harder to do than Year of the Rat, so I only put four cards in it. it we have Ox of Agonis. Uh, Arc Runner, Transmogrifying One, and Perforos's Emissary, all Ox cards. Um, Transmog Transmogrifying One it's, isn't an Ox itself, but it turns things into it, and I think it would be interesting to see them try to continue this. Of course, it could have just been a Year of the Rat thing, but I think it would be really cool to see them continue it into the future. And we move on to February. So February is going to see the Kaldheim actual paper release. Uh, and when it says paper release, I'm going to talk a little bit more about predictions from the set. We're going to have Secret Layer Snow Classics, and we're going to have Time Spiral Remastered spoilers. So why don't we break these down one by one once again? So yeah, I'm going to add Kaldheim paper release to our little infographic here. Um, I think that Kaldheim is going to be a very interesting set. Now, in this video, I am not doing very specific set spoilers um, in terms of the big sets, because I generally do videos about those separately. So stay tuned for those about Cal Time. It should be coming up here fairly soon. Um, but yeah, I think it'll come out. I think it'll feature snow stuff, and I think that it will be very similar to previous releases that we've seen. I don't think it'll be anything super crazy. Next, we have Secret Layer Snow Classics. So we've been seeing this a lot 
uh, especially recently, it, when we return to a plane or return to a theme, what will happen is they will take the showcase cards. So, for instance, in Zendikar, it was all the landfall cards, and they'll go back and put them on other cards. So, in my prediction, or prediction I have for Cal Time, is we're going to see the return of snow permanents. And those are where they're going to have the frame, the special frames. So, I think every cold, every snow permanent is going to have a special frame variety, including the basic land, so it's going to be very cool if snow basics are a thing in it. Um, and so what they're going to do is they're going to take these four cards that are all kind of played, or at least interesting, snow permanents, and they're going to give them the treatment that they did with the, like, for instance, the old Theros gods got the new Theros uh, showcase frames. We saw this in Zendikar. I think it makes a lot of sense that they will continue this. I notice that I predict this for a lot of the sets in going forward. Next, we have Time Spiral Remastered spoilers, which are going to start uh, on the 22nd, go to the 26th. I don't think it's going to be as long. Normally, I put about 10 days for spoilers. I put a little bit less time just because it is a remastered set and not a full set. If they do it like Arena did it, they'll spoil it in either three days or one. Uh, but I think because it's a paper set, I think it is going to have a much longer spoiler season. It's not as long as a normal set as there are no not going to be any new cards, but who knows? They do spend a fairly long time on master sets. The issue is, of course, you can kind of go to Time Spiral and figure out what's going to be in Time Spiral Remastered. Then in March, we have Time Spiral Remastered actually coming out, and Secret Layer Ancient Borders. So let's just add Time Spiral Remastered to our list over here. Um, I think it'll be an interesting set. Again, I may do predictions for this one, but because it is a remastered, I don't know. But I will definitely be covering it on the channel, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but I expect that to be happening March 12th. This is kind of filling the slot that Mystery Booster held last year, and I think it makes a lot of sense. Mystery Booster was a big reprint product that reprinted old cards in their original frames. This is is a old product being re-released and some cards are going to be in their original frames. So I think it makes a lot of sense that they occupy the same space and seeing it on the timeline it fits here perfectly as well. So I think that is what is going to happen. Next, let's talk about Secret Layer Ancient Borders. So I think this is going to be a Secret Layer focused at Commander players, and it is going to take some iconic spells, and maybe not these five specifically, but it's going to take some iconic spells in each color, or maybe not even iconic, but just powerful spells in each um, color, and it's going to put them in the old borders. You constantly have people asking for old borders, and this is the Secret Layer following up Time Spiral Remastered, where there will be cards with ancient borders, uh, or old borders. And so I think it would make a lot of sense to do a secret layer that goes with that and takes some more modern cards that either gives them new art that looks like old art, or just put them in their existing art in old frames. I think it could be very interesting, and I think it would be a very popular one. And I think that's a really interesting way to use secret layer, not printing brand new cards that people are going to want to go get. So yeah, I think that could be a very interesting thing, and I think it'll happen February 19th. Next, let's move on to April. We have Challenger Deck 2021 coming early in the month. Strixhaven spoilers, Strixhaven pre-release in Arena, and Strixhaven paper release all happening in the same month. month. So let's talk about Challenger Deck 2021. So I think the four of them, now the ones on the right, those are last year's, but uh, I think we're, we're going to get Rogue Tactics, which is going to be a Demir Rogues deck. I think we're going to get Cycling Flare, which is going to be a cycling deck. I think we're going to get Foretold Control. It's going to be an Esper Doom Foretold deck, and I think we're going to get Ramping Rails, which is going to be a teamer deck that is going to obviously want to ramp so yeah i think those are the four we're going to get you get a nice little you know you get blue black you kind of get jess guy there you get esper and then you get teamer so you get a decent you know range over all of the colors so i think it makes a lot of sense um now, obviously, they are designing these with Kaldheim cards in mind, and we don't obviously know those, so maybe there will be, like, a snow way you're winning this game deck. I don't know, but uh, we will have to wait and see, but at this moment, I think these are f not fairly safe bets, but I think they are fair bets. Next, let's talk about Strixhaven. So we have Strixhaven spoilers on March 29th through April 8th. We have Strixhaven pre-release and Arena on April 15th, and Strixhaven paper release on April 23rd. So it's going to essentially be the month of Strixhaven. Um, this is probably going to include Commander decks. However, I could definitely see them not doing their yearly Commander decks. And I know that sounds crazy to say, but if they are releasing two Commander decks, which they've already not confirmed, but it's been leaked about Kaldheim that there will be two commander decks in it. If they're doing two alongside every standard set, they're releasing eight decks per year, and each of them have three cards, so you're getting 24 new commander cards 
uh, a year through this. And so that may be enough to kind of push these out or maybe just change how it works. I would not be surprised if we saw maybe lower costed decks or just some way that they overhaul it to separate it from the usual commander decks uh, as we move into the future. Um, I guess core sets don't have the uh, commander decks, so you're only getting six per year, but I do think having, you know, four of the cheaper ones and then two or then five of the more expensive ones could be a little bit confusing especially saying that uh some of the ones really strong sets are pretty powerful and it may lead to people not buying the new commander ones so i hope they do something interesting with it but we will have to see Again, I will talk more about that in my Shirk Saven prediction video, which will be a little bit later. Now, in May, I had to do it. I think they're going to do Secret Lair, The Chosen One, or Secret Lair Cross Harry Potter. I mean, we're going to Shirk Saven. We are dealing with Harry Potter. And I know a lot of people are going to say, no, they're not going to do that because they receive so much backlash on The Walking Dead. The issue is if they did The Walking Dead, which they clearly planned out ahead of time, right? The odds are they probably planned out another one. It's very similar to the Mythic Edition that we saw on the Ravnican sets. It would not surprise me if all the Mythic Editions were done before the first one was even announced. Therefore, they didn't want to cancel the product, so they just released the ones they had and stopped making new ones. So I would not be surprised if they did a couple crossovers, and they were like, oh, this is a natural fit. So they did these crossover secret layers, and they're like, okay, Backlash, we're not going to do it, but... It's even worse than I would say the Mythic Edition ones. Even if they haven't, like, printed anything, which they don't for Secret Layers, they're probably in a contra contractual agreement to do this, meaning they can't just be like, no, thank you anymore. Uh, most likely, of course, I don't know if they'd have this or not, or if they've worked ahead, but this is all my assumption. So I'm assuming we're going to get at least one more crossover product. Now, whether they make these, like, Silver Border cards, maybe, but I do think we're going to get at least one more crossover, and everyone has been saying, Strixhaven is going to have a Secret Layer the Chosen one, um, and we'll talk about that more when we see that individual one. We have Signature Spellbook Liliana, which starts to feel more and more pointless as Secret Layers come out, and I would not be surprised if we saw maybe Secret Layer Liliana's, like, arsenal, maybe they call it that, um, or maybe they make it Secret Layer Signature Spellbook series of Liliana, which of course is a much bigger name, but maybe they do it that way, which I know would make some people upset as these are WPN exclusives. They're actually meant to help the LGS, and if they were to move them to the Secret Layer website, they would actually be doing the opposite. So I don't really want that, but I would see it maybe happening. My secondary bet would be to go away from the monocolored theme, although I find that unlikely. I think they're going to go Wooberg and then do something interesting, but it would be interesting to see like a signature spellbook Bola, Bolas or a signature spellbook Ugin, uh, something that's a little bit more different, but I do think it'll be Liliana. Liliana? Well, I don't know why I said that so weirdly. We've already had blue, white, red, and I'm saying it's going to be black, which means green is going to be last. It'll probably be signature spellbook either Nissa or Vivian, uh, and so I want to know what you guys would prefer, Nissa or Vivian. Either way, a little bit different. I think Magic Legends, the public beta, is going to be released in May. This is really not based on anything other than the fact that any further would kind of feel ridiculous. I don't know, it's kind of this imaginary line I drew, but I feel like we will have the Magic Legends public beta coming out on May 24th. Then, let's talk about these more individually. Secret Layer, the Chosen One, is going to feature cards from Strixhaven that are branded as Harry Potter cards. They are not going to be completely unique cards like The Walking Dead, which I think will save it a lot of criticism, um, and it'll just be alternate names and art of cards that are in the set. However, these are blank. I could totally see them taking brand new cards and making them a thing, but I do definitely think they're going to take Strixhaven cards and turn them into Harry Potter cards. Um, I would not even be surprised if there were cards in Strixhaven that were designed to kind of work as, oh, this one's kind of a Harry Potter card or whatever, you know, and maybe it'll become something. Uh, and then it does, and it would not surprise me at all. So I don't want this to happen, but I definitely think it may. Next week, let's talk about Signature Spellbook Liliana. Here we get to have a little bit more fun picking out cards. So I think, okay, so if you would have asked me to make a Signature Spellbook Liliana last year, I would have said, Liliana Ves, 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 Ves. Um, the, the card that is just her name would be the card, because that's what it was. It was Jace Beleren, uh, Gideon Jira, Jira, um, and, and those were the cards. But last year we saw Chandra, um, Torch of Inferno from Kaladesh, and it really opened up the possibilities of it's not just going to be the named Planeswalker. It can be the, like, 
a, a powerful or an expensive version to trying to lure people to buy it. And Liliana the Last Hope is the second most expensive Liliana, um, and... Yeah, I think another really awesome card would be Command the Dread Horde. It doesn't necessarily say Liliana on it, but it is a very big card moment for her, Commanding the Dread Horde, and very similarly, Price of Betrayal. Price of Betrayal in this one is very similar to Cathartic Reunion in the Chandra one, and Command the Dread Horde is very similar to like Pyromantic Ascension uh, in the other one. We have Liliana's Caress, which is a card that really hasn't seen our reprint recently and is very Liliana based. Uh, we have Death Shadow, I don't know necessarily, but they could maybe do something interesting with this one. I just thought, oh, it's a card that has some value, because that's honestly what they did. When they went to K Chandra, they seemed to kind of take away some of the personality that they had, and kind of were just like, ooh, cool cards. Um... And so I kind of wanted to mimic that. I wanted to be realistic with these a little bit. And so I could totally see them being like, ooh, Death Shadow. We could reprint that and do some Liliana art with it. Then we have Settled the Score, which obviously is a very big Liliana moment of defying Bells and Lock and Contract and stuff. So then we also have Triumph of Cruelty, another Liliana card, and Demonic Pact, which I think, if it were to happen, would be one of the most assured ones. But I definitely think Price of Betrayal and Demonic Pact are two cards that don't necessarily say Liliana, but are very essential to her character and would make a lot of sense in a signature spread book. And I think that's coming out May 14th. Next, we have Magic Legends Public Beta. I don't have too much to say about it other than I don't think it's going to go well, but I will be covering it on the channel. Uh, if it is good, maybe I will dedicate like a day of the week. Maybe I'll start doing videos on maybe Thursdays, and then we can have like Magical Legends Thursdays, but who knows? We'll see. Maybe it'll be really fun. Um, I'm not sure at this moment. Next, let's talk about June. June, we have the Secret Layer Super Summer Drop, or Summer Super Drop 2021. Um, it would not surprise me if we see these drops every year. And then we have Forgotten Realms spoilers and Forgotten Realms pre-release and um, arena release. Let's talk about the Super Drop. I had some fun with this and kind of just came up with my own themes. So we have Dak Faden representing Planeswalkers Walkin'. So it's literally just Planeswalkers, but walking. These are mostly jokes. Uh, we have Unstoppable, which is essentially just um, some reprints of Uncards. I don't know what could make them more interesting, but I thought, you know, ooh, what is something unique that they haven't done? We have Artist Series, series John Avon. Now, um, whether or not he comes back, because I don't believe there's been a new card with his art on it for a while. So I could totally see this being just a reprint of older cards with that, or if they go specifically out to go get him to do new artwork. Either way, I think there will be an artist series of some kind, maybe not John Avon, but um, I think it is definitely possible. Also, I just realized I misspelled John. There's supposed to be an H there, so it's J-O-H-N. Sorry about that. And then we have Vehicular Chavel to go alongside Planeswalkers Walkin', uh, which are going to be like modern versions of vehicles. So we're going to see some vehicles, and they're going to be like modern versions, because why not? Who cares about magic lore anymore? And then we have a Thousand Words, which I think are really interesting. It's going to be classic cards such as Cancel, maybe not Cancel, but uh, that do not have words at all. They are the full art. Maybe not this frame specifically, but it does not have any words besides the name of the spell. And obviously these would have to be very iconic spells to do that but we've seen this with things like path to exile cancel and so i would love to see like a very like full full art like it literally just has cancel the mana cost and the rest is art for some very iconic spells uh, and i think that could be a very interesting secret layer all right Next, let's talk about Forgotten Realms. I think we're going to see Forgotten Realms mostly in June, but then the paper release in July. Um, and again, I don't have too much to say about the standard set releases just because I am going to be covering those in a different video. Uh, and I'm not talking about predictions. I mean, I am talking about predictions. I just mean they're going to be much closer to the set's release. Next, let's talk about July. July, I think we're going to get the paper release, and I think we're going to get a secret layer D&D classics, which I will explain more. And then I think we're going to get a big announcement, and we'll talk about that here as well. So let's start first by adding Forgotten Realms paper release to my list here. I think that's going to come out July 2nd, and it is coming out maybe like a week early compared to the normal core sets but you have to remember next year we are not getting four standard sets we are getting five and i'm going to talk about why i think that once we get to those sets but i think we're going to get the uh dnd classics uh secret layer so this is going to be bag of holding counter spell fireball and animate dead which are three of those are spells from D and one's an item uh and i think they're going to be done in very like D, &D style like frames and art um and they're just going to be D, &D classic spells and i think it could be very interesting especially because you know 
outside of bag of holding the other three do see a decent amount of play especially in things like commander uh so would not surprise me to see this you know as a thing and we have, then we have a big announcement. So I think we're going to see the announcement of Innistrad Vampires and Innistrad Werewolves, the name. So I think it's going to be Innistrad Crimson Val for Innistrad Vampires and Innistrad Midnight Hunt. I'm not saying I created these names. There were trademark files, filings for these names. So I think it would make a lot of sense if that was it. It could also not be Innistrad. It could literally just be Crimson Val and Midnight Hunt. But that's what I have. I think they're going to announce Commander Masters, which is going to be a new master set focused around Commander, and I think they're going to talk about Arena being on, on consoles, and that's going to be in development because they need to bring it to more platforms. I'm not actually saying that, but they're going to keep trying to bring it to more platforms, even if on console it would be a very weird experience where you'd use like a joystick and you'd basically be playing on um, a computer, but with a joystick. So, yeah, um, not super, I mean, it is super big. The thing is, this is also, this is kind of emulating the last set of the year announcement, like, thing. Like, normally we get one announcement at the end of the year that reveals the set coming up and then talks about the next year. Um, and I think this is going to be that announcement. So, four, what, by the way, four, they're also going to announce next year stuff. Then you might be wondering, why are they doing this so early? And, and I actually just... The issue is, I'm trying to fit two Innistrad sets here in the course of where there normally is only one set. So you'll notice what's going to happen here is August, we're going to be getting Commander Masters, which I'm going to talk about here. Um, Commander Masters, I think, is going to happen. I think, you know, Double Masters was like a surprise release. It was like, oh, Double Masters is coming out, and then it came out. Um, and so I think Commander Masters makes a lot of sense. I searched through my brain for lots of different ideas for uh, a Master set. I'm just like, ooh, what have they been doing a lot of recently? Well, Commander. And you might say, why do you need Commander Masters? Do Modern Masters, I don't know, Legacy Masters, Vintage Masters, and it can also be Commander Le Masters. And I know that's true. Like, there are a lot of um there are a lot of uh, dev sorry sets that feel like commander masters but i think having one that's specifically commander masters would make a lot of sense you get to reprint things that say words like commander on them and i think it would give them an opportunity to print real versions of the secret lair walking dead cards and fix that kind of mistake they made and they're going to want to do that pretty quickly so i think it'll happen next year i would not be surprised if we see a master set every year and so i would put that right here now in that same year we're also getting or in that same month we're also gonna get midnight hunt spoilers the uh vampire or the sorry the werewolf set uh on august 16th which is way earlier than we have the zendikar rising spoilers this year but again i'm trying to split it between two sets here and i really don't see them putting say crimson vow in a Strad vampires in december so it kind of has to go in november but you can't do october and november but you know you are and so let's break down october or sorry september we have september midnight hunt release and the arena release we have secret layer pack leaders and we have commander collection blue all happening in september of course commander Commander Collection is coming out this year in December, but that's only due to a delay. And so if there's not a delay, it will happen in September. So let's break this down a little bit. Midnight Hunt is going to come out September 10th, which is not too, too much earlier than normal. I mean, it is pretty early. Normally it happens later in September, but I think moving it a little bit earlier and then having vampire, the Innistrad Vampire set a little bit later allows there to be enough space in between them. Next we have... Secret Layer Pack Leaders, this is going to be very similar to the other Secret Layers, where it is the Showcase Styles on old cards. I think the Showcase Styles for Pack, um, for, sorry, Midnight Hunt are going to be on the Werewolves, so, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense that we get some of the older Werewolves that maybe still see a little bit of play in something like Commander, and give them a new look. Then we have Commander Collection Blue, which I decided not to put any cards in, um, because I think there are just so many things they could do, and you can tell I reused the Liliana page. So, in I meant to, sorry, blank these out, uh, so that was my mistake, but they, I'm expecting just generic blue spells, Cyclonic Rift is almost guaranteed, uh, stuff like that. So, um, by the way, Cyclonic Rift, Rhystic Study things like that next we have october which is going to see the release of modern horizons 2 because guess what yes that is also coming out next year and we're also going to see secret layer ultimate edition 2 um 
kind of go in, coincide with that, it is the secret layer for Modern Horizons. Uh, outside of Commander Masters, I have had a secret layer going alongside each main set release, and I think Ultimate Edition 2 makes a lot of sense with the fetch lands being printed in Modern Horizons. It makes sense for them to finish up the Ultimate Edition thing uh, right after, and I think it'll leave people a lot less sour that they, you know, that it happened right after they release Modern Horizons 2 because they'll be like, okay, they're reprinting them, and there's a showcase kind of version of them as well. So yeah, Modern Horizons 2 spoilers expected to come out uh, October 15th, which is a very different spot than its last time like approach. It looks like they're going to be moving things like Modern Horizons and Commander Legends closer to the end of the year, um, but I think it will not be after Innistrad Vampires, which I think is going to be pushed later. And because of special double standard things, this is earlier than Commander Legends, but later than the original Modern Horizons. So yeah, everything here is really like... Normal, if it was a normal year, I could definitely see this being pushed later, but because of the five standard set things, st five standard sets thing, I, I definitely see this happening in October. Then we have Secret Layer Ultimate Edition 2, which is just Ultimate Edition, uh, where it was five fetch lands for like 300 bucks, uh, but it's going to be with these lands and with new art. Next we have November, so we're going to see Crimson Vow spoilers. Secret Layer Extra Life 2021, Crimson Vow pre-release, and Crimson Vow paper release, and then we have the Secret Layer um, Secret Versary 2021. Something that scared me when I saw the Secret Layer uh, Secret Secret Layer Secret Versary 2020 was that it had the word 2020 after it. It means they're going to do it more in the future, and so obviously I brought it up here. So we have Crimson Vow, which is going to have spoilers and release kind of in the same month. Although spoilers do kind of happen on October, but uh, I figured you know. It's, it's mostly a November thing here, so, yep, I think it's going to come out, I think we are going to um, see vampires, obviously, as a main theme, and, like, showcase cards for that, and this is the only set that I do not have a direct secret layer part connected with it, so, yep, that's because of the secret versary, I think it would be a bit much to do a secret layer other than a secret layer secret versary, so, yeah. Then we have Secret Layer Extra Life 2021. I kind of just did the same thing that they did, uh, where I picked cards that have somewhat to do with, you know, helping people. So we have Strength of the Pride, Sigarda's Aid, Force of Vigor, and Ristic Study. All very interesting cards. I mean, Ristic Study, they all have different ways you can connect them to the charity. Um, and so I think that it makes a lot of sense. And it would be interesting as a lot of these cards see play, especially in Commander. And then we have Secret Layer Secret Versary 2021. So we have Modern Knowledge, which is just going to be kind of draw spells in a more modern art style. We have Foil First, which are going to be a bunch of cards that have never been seen in foil before printed in foil. We have Alternate Dealings, which are going to be a bunch of alternate win condition. We have Work in Progress, which are going to be all new, not old ones, all new playtest cards. And then we have Album Art, which is going to be music-based um, cards with album art looking art. Um, so let me explain these a little bit. Modern Knowledge is the one I'd like to release here, and maybe album art. Uh, you could easily replace that with a vampire one for the Crimson Vow release and just have it be part of the secret versary. Uh, I like Foil first, I think it's an interesting concept, and I think the, the, playtest cards are a really interesting thing for Secret Layer. Secret Layer is meant to be a collector's product. So a card that is like a playtest card is perfect for that because you're not paying to buy them to play with them. You're paying for them as a collector's item. And I think that's really what secret layers should be. And I don't think people are going to be mad that they're printing silver bordered cards in a secret layer. I think if they were legal in something, people would get mad, but I think it's completely fine. And I think we'd get a lot of really awesome cards from it. And yeah, I just really like it. So yeah, you could definitely replace either Modern Knowledge or Album Art. Album Art would have a better name. Uh, with a, the Crimson Vow thing, but we will have to see. Next, we have December, which I only have one thing, which is the release of Unreal, which is going to essentially just be a the fourth unset. It's not this box set. It is not any of this. It is Unreal, which is just a brand new silver border set. Um, I know it's coming a little close to the previous one, but they seem to be ramping up the speed in which they release all sorts of things, so it would not surprise me if we see this as a surprise December release very close to Christmas. And that is going to do it for this video. I know I said I was going to state everything like fact, but I found that it was a little bit uh, weird to do, so I, I switched a little bit around. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've been experimenting a little bit recently, and I want to know what you guys think about all my predictions in the comments down below. I will see you guys in the next video. Um, also, leave your predictions down below as well. I will see you in the next one.